Chapter Four. The summer took an eternity to pass, but eventually it did. I was working outside one day when the last of the outsiders' boats returned to Klabik, carrying both freshly plucked children and those they had regathered. We saw them make their way past us where we were knelt in the garden. We will start classes tomorrow, Agnes told me. I felt like dancing around the potatoes, but the raven watching me, but the raven was watching me and I didn't dare. Walking into the classroom the next morning, I stood as straight as I could, hoping to impress Sister McQuellen, but I was in for a shock. The kind nun wasn't there. It was the raven who hovered behind the large wooden desk where Sister McQuellen should have been. How could the raven be my teacher? The smile shrank from my face as I squeezed into the small desk that she pointed me to. Unfortunately, it was right in front of hers. After all of the other children had been seated, she let out a croak. By now, most of us who were new had become very good at following the cues of the older girls. We had even learned a few phrases of English. Each of us found a reader inside our desk. We pulled the books out and set them before us. The raven rose from her seat, closing in on me, pointed a yardstick in my direction, motioning for me to stand. She wants you to read aloud, whispered Agnes from the seat behind me. I rose to my feet, but how was I to read? I didn't even know which page to turn to. The raven cocked her hip and tapped her foot. Well, she said. My cheeks felt hot. I looked around me from child to child. The faces stared blank, stared back blank waiting as my stockings began to slide down my calves. The Gwichin girl raised her hand high into the air. Catherine, acknowledged the nun. She rose and stood, started reading aloud from her own school book. The raven raised a wing-like arm, silencing Catherine. She turned to me and pointed her finger to the ground. The other children giggled. You can sit down now, Agnes said in a soft voice. How did the raven expect us to learn without speaking to us in our language so we could understand? My first reading lesson had not been what I had anticipated. I was grateful when it was over, and I launched myself from my desk, eager to follow the others outside to play. But the raven stopped me. She put a brush in my hand and pointed to the colossal chalkboards. I gave her a questioning look. I did not know why she was making me stay to clean them. She answered with something in English that I did not comprehend, and my older classmates cried with laughter as they left the room. Later, I stopped Agnes in the hall. What did the teacher say that made the others laugh at the end of class, I asked. She said that cleaning the boards should be no problem for you because you are so tall your stockings won't even stay up. She has it in for me. I know she does. Who? asked a lyrical voice in our own language. It was Sister McQuellen. We had not noticed that we were standing in front of her office. No one, Sister, answered Agnes in English before tugging me down the hall. The raven thought she knew a lot, but she cared more about making us do chores than about teaching us. She, did, she said that chores were part of our education. For some reason, she seemed to think that I needed more of an education than the others. And as the weeks went by, I was forever moping, mopping the floors, tidying the recreation room, and emptying the honey buckets. I wasn't sure what she meant to teach me, but I had something to teach her about the spirit of us in Nouveliet. One evening in October, after a hard day of the Raven's education, I sat over my bowl of cabbage soup in the long dining hall, watching the other children eat. It was the same food we had been force-fed when we first arrived, and I remembered how many girls had become ill, the same girls who were now lapping it up because they were starving. It made me angry. How could they expect us to eat this meatless mush? My father's sled dogs would not have licked the bowl it was put in. My stomach hurt, but that night I refused to touch it to my lips. Perhaps you need help with your appetite, suggested the raven as she dropped a soppy wet rag right into my lap. She didn't have to say another word. 
By now, I knew that she intended for me to wipe down all of the tables. I looked to Catherine and the other Gwich and girls. They were like a flock of opened mouth ha hatchlings giggling at me. If I had a pocket of stones, I would shoo you with a storm of pebbles, I said, and pushed the rag to the floor. That raven swooped down and clutched my dress in her claw. This is no place for a willful child, she hissed. I jerked back, knocking my bowl over. The mush oozed down the raven's dark habit. This time, the hatchlings were laughing at her. She raised her claw at me, and I crouched to avoid the blow. Then Sister McQuellen glided between us, the swan protecting me with her gentle wing. The raven fixed her sharp little eyes on me for a long moment before scuttling off to clean herself up. The refactory had long since been deserted by the time I made it to the last table. A dark shadow grew in the doorway. It was the raven. You seem to require a little more education, she whispered. I knew I was in for trouble.